Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Executive Editor of Data Diversity. We'd like to thank you for joining this Data Diversity webinar, Six Keys to an Agile Tableau Implementation, sponsored by Alteryx. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we'll be collecting them via the Q&A in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. If you'd like to tweet, we encourage you to share how it's your questions via Twitter using hashtag Dataversity. If you'd like to chat with us or with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. Just click the chat icon in the upper right for that feature. And as always, we will send a follow-up email within business days containing links to the slides, the recording of this session, and additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now let me introduce our speakers for today, uh, Maimuna Block and Albert Pardia. Maimuna is an Alliance Marketing Manager at Alteryx, focused on a big data and data visualization partnerships. She has over 10 years of experience in partner marketing and is a passionate about bringing joint technology solutions to customers. Albert is a solutions engineer at Alteryx with 16 years of experience in database marketing and seven years of experience using Alteryx from the client side. And with that, let me turn it over to Maimuna to get us started. Hello and welcome. Hi Shannon, thank you so much. Um, as Shannon mentioned, this is Six Keys to an Agile Tableau Implementation. I'm Maimuna Block and I also will be joined by Albert Pardia here today. Um, so as Shannon mentioned, we're Alteryx, and of course, before we begin and before we have a conversation, you say hi, right? So I just want to say a little bit about us. Um, we're the leading platform for self-service data analytics, um, and we're passionate about empowering analysts. And I'm going to start a little at the end here, because really the main message here is delivering deeper insights in hours, not weeks. And how we do that is we allow analysts of the way to prepare, blend, and analyze all their data in a repeatable workflow. And the repeatable part's really important. We'll, there'll be more on that later. Um, the second pillar is a way to deploy and share analytics at scale. Because when you're doing your work and you're doing your analytics, how do you then share that throughout an organization? And how do you make, make sure the most um, your work is being made the most of? So, you know, because I'm not sure where everyone is um, in their data analytics and visualization portion of their analytic journey, and of course we'd love to talk about this later in the Q&A, um, I just wanted to talk a little about Tableau, because obviously this is the six keys to an agile Tableau implementation. Um, and we're talking about Tableau, really what it's about in visual data discovery, right? And as the shift towards data-driven decision making has continued, many organizations and analysts have realized the value in visualizing their data. So the great thing about visualizing, visualizing data is it allows organizations to really interpret and spot connections and interesting moments without, within vast amounts of data, right? Visually, things just pop, jump out at you. So even without knowing the context, these dashboards I'm showing you here, you can see certain interesting moments and you can see um, pinpoint areas where maybe you need to explore something further. And it's really helping people make decisions based on data, make those decisions faster. And Tableau is a really powerful tool, right? So it allows users to manipulate and interact directly within the data visually, which is even greater. Um, but you know, as you move further along your path of digital data discovery, you realize to fully take advantage of your data. And you know, I think we're lucky very lucky to be in a world now where you benefit from a vast amount of data available. Um, but you realize that you're still in the same situation you were before you started visualizing the data. Um, or, you know, in some cases, visualizing data with Tableau has been so beneficial, this actually then brings to light within organizations what many analysts know already, which is that preparing data is a very slow and time-consuming task. You know, so what about data prep? Um, you know, we took a survey and we found that most analysts are using what they know, right, which is Excel. And it's the preferred spreadsheet application, it's a legacy tool, and it's, you know, for basic calculations and manipulating numeric data, but unfortunately the design dates back well before this current age win of big data. Um, and so it's not great at preparing and cleansing large volumes of data, especially disparate data. Um, and it definitely was not designed for the frequency of data we have now, right? Um, you know, another thing we found in the poll is that a lot of analysts are joining organizations that already have established in-house tools. And, you know, it's hard to enact change within an organization that might already have their tools in place. And organizations may have spent money on these tools. So where do you go from there? Um, 
SQL queries is also the methodology we hear a lot. Um, you know, that requires specialized skills, and it can be time consuming and often brittle, right? You might change one thing, um, and then you have to go back and recode. Um, other parts might break, it's brittle. And so it's not surprising that then we said, well, are your tools effective? And only 7% of people say that tools, existing tools, are very or extremely effective. Um, and you know, the end result is that most data analysts are spending the vast majority of their time cleansing and contributing data and not actually analyzing it. You know, that's the fun part, right? <laughs> like, you know you have those insights there and you can't wait to get to the part where you have that aha moment um, within your data and maybe within Tableau. And so how do you ensure that you're making faster, agile decisions on all your data and you have the most up-to-date data and consistent data? Um, and so what we like to say is your analytics are only as good as your data and your data process. And so that's why we came up with this session is um, six keys to implementing an agile tablet implementation. It's to make ensure that you have a solid foundation of uh, flexible data prep and agile data prep so you can really maximize the analytics you're doing in Tableau. Um, and after we walk through the six keys, we're going to get to the good stuff, which is how do you accomplish this? So with that, let's get started with the six keys. So number one, ensure that you can use all your data. Um, you're not getting the full picture if your visualizations are only being done on half your data, right? Um, and usually the problem there is that you don't have a quick way to cleanse and blend and join multiple data sources. Again, you know, I've said already we're blessed with a bounty of data sources, but they are disparate and, you know, maybe or maybe you're working with multiple Excel sheets, right, billions of rows. Um, so you need to really establish a methodology um, that ensures you can use all your data. Um, so number two, make sure your work, you can edit it easily, right? You, you put a lot of work in these analytics, but then only to have to go back and maybe recode or spend time rewriting formulas. Um, and once your visualization, if you're already at that point of using Tableau, is created, it's hard to change the work behind your workbook. Um, so you're going to have to go back and you're spending time coding or even waiting on outsourced help. Um, you know, a lot of companies, consulting firms or contractors to code. And so how can you ensure that, you, that your analytic work behind your visualization is easily editable? Uh, the third point, make sure you can enable ad hoc investigation. So these visualizations are helping spot new trends and pinpointing areas that need more investigation but then that begets more questions, right? And you want to dig deeper into that data. But do you really want to start your prep and analytics from scratch? Well, of course not. Um, so it's really important that you set up your analytics in a workflow that can be easily replicated and then adjusted on the fly. Um, so to really enable that instant ad hoc investigation. Um, so the fourth key here is how do you get the most from your analytics? And you need to make sure you're doing that, right? Um, so you, under, you want to understand your data, and maybe you do understand your data already, which is great, but then you're thinking, okay, how can I get more out of my data? Um, and you, it's great if you can apply spatial um, or predict future outcomes, right? Because the only thing better than making data-driven decisions is being proactive about those decisions and digging deeper into that data. Um, you know, to get spatial context around your data, maybe you want to assess drive time for store locations, or maybe use predictive analytics to see which customers will give you the highest lifetime value. Um, and if there's a way for you to do this without the need for a data scientist or a specialist, and then visualize it, um, why wouldn't you? Um, and so the fifth key is instant answers. Don't wait around for answers. I think we've all been in that situation where you're sitting there and something's spinning and you're waiting and waiting. We're all used to really instant information these days, which is great. Um, so maybe you're already using Tableau. You're sitting there and you have so much data that these visualizations are taking a lot of time to render. And when your organization has become reliant on immediate access to insights, that can be really frustrating. Um, and so you need to make sure and ensure you have a way to pre-process the data so that your calculations are done um, before the visualization is rendered in Tableau. So you're not waiting for the visualization um, to render. And you can get yourself and your organization immediate answers. Um, and finally, last but not least, 
be able to share your work. Um, you're doing an amazing job, right? And why wouldn't you want to share your work? And the reason behind that is that way others can see the work behind your analytics and the thought process, and that's hard with some legacy tools. Um, you know, and you often get this, how did we get your question? And it's hard to go back and retrace your steps. And you're already doing all the um, analytics already, and so you're like, okay, I have to go back and look at my work. Um, if you can package this up and then as well and spread it throughout your organization, this saves time and it makes your analytics scalable. Um, and you know, the other benefit this has for your analytics and Tableau is that then your analysis is being done consistently. So if you can create a workflow, um, you know, that blends all the data and gets everyone to the point where every department or group has a the same consistent data set, that means everyone is working off the same data, and that's really beneficial for an organization. Um, so again, six key is really to ensure that your work is shareable, which means also traceable and auditable and usable. And so with that, I will pass it over to Albert so you can really see and assess how you can accomplish this. Thank you, Maimuna. I'll go ahead and share my screen. All right. Well, as uh, Maimuna earlier pointed out, that uh, you know a majority of our time as line of business analysts, we we spend what we spend about close to seventy, sometimes eighty percent, prepping our data, making it look uh, uh, good, so that uh, you know so that Tableau can you know can consume it, and we can create our our dashboards. And uh, you know again. This the tool that we have here, the tool that you're seeing here, which is Alteryx. It's it actually takes care of that 80, 70, 80 percent of time. Um, you know, you you save this workflow, and then something, and then you can you can repeat that process. So, in the next 20 to 25 minutes, I'm going to uh, do a just really a high level overview of the software. Uh, we're going to create a workflow uh, where we're going to grab data. And do some, you know, some data manipulation, some data processing, and then we're going to output it into a, uh, a Tableau uh, Tableau workbook. So as you can see here, this this workflow, or I'm sorry, this this tool right here, is really geared towards that line of business analysts with minimal to no coding experience at all. And again, uh, you know, there are so much, uh, you know, so many things that we need to do with data before we consume in Tableau. So uh, the functionalities that we have here pretty much covers a lot of those uh, daily tasks that we have, whether that be um, accessing data from different data sources, uh, doing a lot of the prepping and the blending, parsing, uh, aggregation, and uh, again, also with the spatial, if you're doing any type, any type of uh, geospatial analysis like drive time or trade area analysis. And then also uh, getting into more of the uh, predictive nature, the uh, high-level high, uh, level analytics, where we're trying to predict behavior uh, based on uh, certain uh, algorithms, uh, based on certain models. Uh, we have all of those tools here um, at your fingertips. And then again, you know, you don't need to be a coder. You don't need to be an R coder or a SQL coder to, uh, you know, to create these models. This tool again is is really geared towards to that uh, you know line of business analysts without that experience. So as I begin this demo, it's it's a drag and drop environment where I drag the tool, I dropped it right here in um, uh, on the canvas, and this is where I grab my data. And uh, as you can see here, we can grab different types of uh, data sets, uh, whether that be an Excel file, a CSV file, or a or a file from the uh, uh, from a database platform, whether that be uh, SQL, Oracle, Amazon Redshift, Teradata, there's there's really a lot to uh, you know to list. And if you are curious in regards to uh, you know the different types of uh, data uh, data files that we can access, you can go to our website altrix.com, and under tech specs, you can see all of the different data sources here. And this list is not static; it's always increasing. So, but let's on with our with our workflow here so I'm going to go ahead and, and access a data set here and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to grab the CSV file as you see right there and then within the CSV file I can just go ahead and run it add a browse run it and just like that you have access to the data now I'm not limited to the number of input data tools uh, I can bring in I can bring in 
one, two data inputs or 20 data inputs. So again, we don't have a theoretical limit on how much data you can bring in. And you know, the, the limit really, uh, it really resides on the resources of your uh, either server or your, uh, or your laptop. So the second thing I'm going to do is, uh, you know, I'm going to view this data, which is right here. Again, it's a loan, it's a, a loan data uh, file where I have the name of the loan and some sort of indicator code. And I see the loan values by year here as, as columns. So the first thing I need to do is that, well, I need to transform some of this uh, data type here. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I know that I grabbed this particular file as a CSV and as all of the, uh, the data analysts out there knows that once you grab something from a CSV, the, uh, the default format for that is character right there. Now, obviously, this is a numeric value, so I need to change it to a numeric value. And you can do that here in Alteryx, where you can just change the field type of the highlighted fields into some sort of a numerical uh, type. In this case, we're going we're gonna to use double. Go ahead and run that right there. Now it's a double. Now it's an actual numeric that we're, where we can do some sort of calculation on it, right? So, the, and the next thing I'm going to do is that obviously I'm going to prep this data so that Tableau can consume it. And I actually want the, the values of these fields, these field names or these header names to be actual values. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, transpose uh, this data set where I am going to choose these fields as my hinge and go ahead and run it. There it is. Now you see all of those different years, those different values. Uh, header names are now actually values for one, in, in one column. And from here I can, uh, again, um, manipulate and even rename, uh, you know, header fields here. So this one I'll call it a year. And on here on the bottom, I'll call that as a loan. Go ahead and run it again. And then one, and then again, one thing I noticed right away: that I have null values now in my in this workflow that I'm going to create. I am, uh, um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and and not delete the null values, but isolate only the values that are not null. So I'm going to go ahead and put a filter tool here. A filter tool is like an equivalent of a where clause in, uh, in SQL. So I'm going to go ahead and find the loan where it's not null. Run that again. And you will see, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so you can see, see this. There are two anchors here, the true side and the false side. Now the true side, where I'm, where the, uh, the, uh, the logic that I want is where the loan is not null will show right here on the true side. It will show you all values where it's not null. And on the false side, it will show you the values that are not null. Now I can do further filtering here where I can again pick a field. This time year comes after um, 2009, for example. Now, as you notice, while I'm creating this workflow, I'm not doing any type of scripting at all. It's just a drag and drop right onto the uh, right onto the canvas here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I, you know, I'm looking at this. Well, let me go ahead and run it first. Bingo. And, you know, I notice that uh, I have this indicator code and I want a little bit of a um, more of a descriptor. So again, as I said in the beginning, you're not limited to the, uh, the number of files that you can bring in. Uh, I'll go ahead and bring in another file. And actually, I'm going to bring in a lookup table where there it is, appropriately named lookup table. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend it, or in other words, I'm going to do a, some sort of VLOOKUP or an inner join, right? So I want it to be a little bit more descriptive. I see that what I want is really this column right here, this topic column. But as I view this file, one of the things I realize is that I don't really need the entire field, uh, the entire name. All I want really is that more that major category, environment. I don't need the land use or the agricultural production. So I need a way to parse that, those values out. And again, as I'm looking at this, I notice that the, the delimiter to parse it out is a colon. So I'll go ahead and drop my text to columns uh, tool where I look for that topic my delimiter is a colon. 
I want it uh, split into two columns. Let me go ahead and run. Hit OK. And there, scroll all the way to the right. And you can see there it is. I'm able to parse out the values for that one uh, for that one column into two separate columns. Great, awesome. Now, obviously, I have all of these other uh, attributes here that I don't necessarily need. So I, what I will do is I'll bring down this select tool right here, where I will just select the fields or the attributes that I need, which is the series code and this topic one, which has that major category. And I'll rename this as topic. And the reason why I'm bringing in a series code is because that will be my match key. I'm going to do an inner join here um, or a VLOOKUP. So I'll drop in this join tool right here. And I will connect it uh, from the one on top, true side. And as long as I know my match key, which is here, it's called the indicator code. And here it's called series code. And let me go ahead and run it. I'll zoom in a bit. And you notice right away that there are three anchors right here. The, the letter J, the middle anchor, shows you records that are common between the two branches, between the two files right, right here. So these are the records that are common. Anything above here, L, means that those records uh, are only present uh, on the above file. But as you can see, there are zero records displays, uh, displayed. So that means all of the records matched. And on the bottom one, you see records that fell out uh, that are only present in this lookup table. So now I, I, I have the choice whether I want to do a right outer join, a left outer join, or just the results from an inner join by using a union tool. Now for this example, I'm just going to stick with the ones in the middle, the union tool, because that's all I'm doing really is prepping this data set to be consumed by Tableau. Um, now, the other thing I realized is that my year here is just, well, it's just a year value. And I know that uh, I need to change this into uh, a format where Tableau can recognize it as a date. So I will bring this uh, formula tool here, directing it to the records that I want, which, which is the middle, uh, middle anchor right here. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new field. I'll call it year date. The type will be a date format. And I'll do a little bit of concatenation here, where I'll use the value of the year and then concatenate it with some values here. Let me go ahead and run it. Hit OK. And my final data set, perfect. This is what I want right there. That's the value that I want. And then from here, what I'll do now is I will output this data. Now, like I showed you in the beginning, we, we can output this into several different types of format, whether that be a CSV, an Excel file, or back into a, a database platform. But this time, really, I just want to output this into a TDE, a TDE file, or even, even, or even better. I, you know, I already created a workbook, and I want to update the uh, the data source of that workbook, so I don't need to recreate my my dashboard. So all I need to do is look for that output uh, tool from Tableau, where I will update my workbook right here. All righty. Excellent. Let me zoom out. And what we did here is really we, we created a simple, really simple workflow where we do a lot of our data prep and our data blend here. And again, you can save this workflow and then you can even schedule it to run at a certain cadence, whether that be weekly or monthly or daily, you know, depending on, let's say, for example, I'm accessing a database, right? And I know that every week, it's um, you know it's constantly being updated, and I can I, you know as I know I, I can you know directly connect to the table in that database. So 
you know, you don't even need to open up Altrix. You can definitely schedule this workflow to run at that particular frequency or cadence that you want. As you can see here, in the, uh, after it ran, um, we have the, uh, the results right here, TWB. Let me go ahead and click on that, which is the, uh, the Tableau uh, workbook. And again, once this opens, I, I do not claim to be a, uh, a Tableau uh, uh, artist here or an artisan. Um, you know, my, my workbook is very, <laughs> as you can see, it, it's, it's very generic. But, you know, I was able to uh, update the, the particular data source that I wanted to update, you know. And, uh, again, it will, uh, you know, it updated my, my, uh, my workbook. Now, one of the other things that I wanted to show you, again, because uh, right in the beginning I, I also mentioned uh, some of the functionalities here, and I think Maimuna mentioned it also, spatial and also the advanced analytics portions, which is the predictive. We have all of those tools as well. So if you're doing any type of um, you know, advanced analytics where you need to predict a certain behavior based on past attributes, you can use these uh, these tools that we have here. And what we did, what we did is that we actually used open source R. Open source R, or the R coding is the one, is the engine behind these tools. And let me go ahead and drop one of these tools right here. Let me go ahead and zoom in. Now, these, this tool, this particular tool, is actually a macro. And when I, whenever I say macro, a macro is a compilation of other tools. Um, you know, all house into one single tool or one single macro right here. So I can open up this macro, see what's inside, zoom out here a little bit, and you can see all of the tools that comprise that macro. Again, if for any R coders out there that want to see this, where, you know, Altrix is, an, uh, is not a black box, you can definitely see the... Uh, the R scripting right here. And let's say, for example, you want to create your own R tool or you want to create your own algorithm, uh, you can certainly, you know, put down this, uh, you know, R tool right here, drop in your R code and create your own macro where you can put it, you know, right smack right here. And again, we what we did here, again, we're, we're targeting that line of business analyst with minimal to no coding experience at all. So for those people, this is, you know, again, a, another option for you if you want to do uh, some sort of uh, predictive algorithm uh, or creating a response model, for, for example, using some of these predictive algorithm tools that we have. And we have, um, you know, we have uh, regressive algorithms here and also some uh, you know, classification algorithms uh, as well. And again, you know, we, we have a whole host of uh, other tools here. We, we have around 250 tools. If you want to do some A-B testing, or some um, you know time series type of uh, prediction, uh, it, it's all in here. Even even doing some uh, simulation and optimization, we also have it uh, here as well. Now, one of the things I wanted to show you is also the annotation. And now I have a prepared um, prepared workflow here. One of the things you can do is that you can also be descriptive in your workflow. So if let's say, for example, you want to, uh, you know, you want to create this workflow, obviously it's saved and you want another person running this workflow. The, this other person taking over uh, this workflow doesn't, you know, does not need to, you know, ask anyone and say, hey, is there any, any type of, uh, you know, uh, Word document that I can read on how this workflow runs. We have some annotation um, capabilities here where you can drop in, where you can drop in, uh, you know, any type of text you want to put on the workflow so that the other analyst can take over or maybe it could be you you know maybe you you uh you know you you want to know hey what did i do like two weeks ago you know what, what what were the processes that i that i did and you can really it's 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 set up like a microsoft visio where you can you can see how you know how each each step is taken and how you know from from this point accessing data doing a data join uh, which is or an inner join and so on and so forth and then doing a little bit of predictive um, the other thing that we, uh, the other functionality that we have is, again, is also spatial analytics. Um, you know, within that spatial analytics tool, we can create trade areas, we can create maps, find drive time um, analysis as well. 
And, um, you know, these are the things that, uh, you know, really help, uh, you know, those companies that need to visually see where their customers are or need to visually see, you know, what areas should I target. And uh, for this particular example, I'll go ahead and open up this workbook right here because I just ran it. So this, this particular example that we have right here, uh, you know, we're trying to create a response model where we're trying to predict which customers has a, a high probability of, uh, you know, saying yes to, uh, you know, to the next marketing communication. And again, you know, once you create this workflow, you can go ahead and, uh, you know, run this several times right here. And uh, again, as you can see here, we're just updating this workbook that was already done. And then again, using the logistic regression formula uh, algorithm, and using a score tool, you know, we're able to, to find a score. As you can see here, we're able to uh, figure out which records are high value targets. And then we're outputting this into a TDE that's contained in that workbook. And let me go ahead and show you right there. So what we're doing here is really we're just updating this you know, based on the new data that we're connected to, whether that be a standalone data or a data file in a database, um, you know, it, it, you know, we're accessing that live, and then our data visualization is also updated as well. And from here, this is where we can, you know, really see, you know, we we can see the value in regards, no pun intended, um, in regards to which uh, records or which customers that we should uh, we should target. So I am going to go ahead and pass this, pass the ball to my Muna to wrap things up here. Great, thank you so much, Albert. That was an awesome demonstration. Sure thing. Sorry, I muted myself for a second there. Um, so, you know, we covered a lot today, and so I just wanted to bring it back to um, how we really help analysts discover deeper insights in hours, not weeks. And you saw the workflow there. And again, really it's about using all your data, being able to prepare and blend it, enrich it with Experian data, TomTom data, analyze it with predictive and spatial, and then share it. Um, and again, really want to emphasize, as Albert showed, this is all in a reusable and repeatable workflow. Um, we output up to Tableau, obviously, and you know, helping build that foundation for Tableau visual analytics is incredibly important. Um, but we also can output to Click, Oracle, Microsoft Power BI, um, back into Excel, et cetera. So there's a lot of amazing options here. And if you go um, to the website, Albert Show, www.altrix.com, you can see some of these input and output specs. Um, and then really what I want to end on is this really relatable and exciting story um, of a data analyst. Um, and so actual picture not of the store, because this customer is North America's largest home group in the um, And so as that kind of business, they had a strategic goal to optimize revenue per store. And you know, customer preferences vary from store to store. So how do you optimize your product mix? by location to achieve that target. Um, and it's incredibly hard when you have 575 product categories, hundreds of thousands of product SKUs per store, not to mention multiple price points per product line, and you know, combining all of these potential SKU store combinations with customer data, transactional data, is a huge, huge challenge. And so this analyst was using Excel to blend sales data and it was taking him two weeks. And even then, the very best he could do was not do individual, you know, analyze individual stores, but cluster stores by geographic regions and analyze the category performance of only 5 to 10% of all their merchandise. So it wasn't even an exact store and it wasn't all their merchandise. So this analyst downloaded the free 14-day trial of Alteryx and within that time period, he was able to build a workflow that decreased his time to blend all his sales data from two weeks to less than one hour. Huge time savings here, right? And then Obviously, you can do other things with time, analyze more data. Um, and so what used to take two weeks to analyze only 5 to 10% of SKUs, that can be done 10 times a day, every day, instantaneously for management, stores, um, on all the SKUs. Um, and then he also decided to start using Tableau, and 
you know, instead of putting things back into PowerPoint and getting people's comments, now he has these live dashboards and he uses all tricks to prepare all the data and then he delivers mass customized um, Tableau workbooks to all the business users um, within this large home improvement retailer. Um, he also was able to automate the process of eliminating duplicate data, um, which was, you know, a tedious hours long effort. And he reduced that down to about three minutes. So this is a really cool example of how an analyst empowers himself. And, you know, and then in turn, his organization with analysts on all their data. And obviously, this gives them a competitive edge, which is incredibly exciting. Um, so thank you so much. Um, after this little Q&A, I just wanted to highlight some important links here. Um, I mentioned that free 14-day trial. Um, you can download it right away. Um, there's an option to download, or there's a three-hour test run you can do. Um, you're not allowed to download things at your organization. Um, and then you can download a starter kit, which has pre-built workflows and the Tableau visualizations, um, some of which we shared today. And this is a really great way to get started um, after you download the trial, or even before you download the trial, you can check that out. Um, and you're allowed to then incorporate your own data. Um, I would have loved to share some other customer stories, but you can also go to www.altrix.com slash Tableau, um, and you'll be able to check out some of the other customers we have there. We have stories from Audi, um, as well as J.P. Morgan Chase, and some other really interesting case studies. Um, so with that, uh, let's move into the Q&A portion. Thank you both for this great presentation and demonstration. Uh, just a reminder, one of those common questions that people ask are uh, questions about the slides and the recording. So I will send a follow-up email by end of day Thursday for this webinar with links to both the slides and the recording. I'll also include a link to the 14-day uh, free, free trial, as mentioned. Uh, so let's just dive into the questions here. Uh, can uh, Alteryx access SAS files from a Unix server? I'll, I'll answer that question. Um, Alteryx can access actually SAS files, SAS 7B dot files. Now, um, as long as you have uh, access to that server, you have permissions to that server, the answer is yes, you can access that. Now, uh, I'm also um, Looking at some of the questions here being uh, being uh, written down, and I think one of the, one of the common questions I'm seeing here is is Alteryx an ETL type of tool, you know, or is it is is that it's only only functionality? Actually, the answer is is no. Um, you know what? I'll go ahead and share my screen for a second. Uh, my moon, I'm gonna can, if you can pass me the ball oh, yes. for a second. Thanks. I and mean, then while you're doing that. Um, you know, maybe I will cover this, so sorry if I'm duplicating, but, you know, and say maybe people have started using it as an ETL tool, but then when they realize they start preparing their data and cleansing it, um, they have all this time back, right? And so they're saying, okay, well, what can I, else can I do? And so that's when we see people start moving into the advanced analytics, which I think is really cool. Um, anyway, sorry, Albert, take it away. <laughs> oh, no, not, not, not a problem. Uh, no, it's 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 a very it's a good question. It's a fair question because sometimes you just want to know. Well, you know, who do you guys compete against, right? Who do you you know? Do you compete against an Informatica, like an ETL tool? Do you compete against SAS, where they do all of these uh, you know uh, predictive uh, uh, algorithms, or or Rapid Miner with, with any type of uh, data mining uh, you know uh, advanced analytic platform? Uh, who do you compete with? And uh, if you guys know Gartner, Gartner uh, in, uh, you know, uh, published this. Uh, particular uh, uh, slide uh, where where Alteryx actually resides right smack in the middle. We do all of those things. Again, our target is that self-service data analyst. Um, you know that uh, you know that don't necessarily need to uh, you know bother any. Well, you know, not that I'm saying you're bothering anyone, but you can as a self-service data analyst uh, analyst access data. Make it uh, you know you can create a workflow where it can be an ETL type of workflow. You can you can create an Alteryx workflow where it can be a uh, uh, you're creating a uh, a predictive model, for example, or doing do some sort of uh, um, you know uh, or creating a report, a, a static report, whether that be in Excel. But also at the same time, you know, we do know we do have partnerships, especially with Tableau. We we know we, that's one of our biggest partners, which is Tableau, and we know where our, where our niche is. We know our niche is really 
this portion right here, this data preparation, data blending portion, where sometimes, you know, again, you could, sometimes you, you could use that in Tableau, but when you start accessing more than one data source, let's say you're accessing 20 different data sources and, and you're bringing in more than 1 million records, you're bringing in hundreds and millions of rows. This is where, this is where Tableau kind of bogs down a little bit. And this is where Alteryx is able to do all of that data wrangling, data prepping and the data blending of all of those hundreds and millions of rows that we can prepare and then put it in a in a aggregated data set to be exported into Tableau. All right, well, since you're addressing ETL, um, let me ask the specific questions to ETL. Uh, I primarily need ETL too, so what does the advanced analytics mean to me? Good Thanks. question. Go ahead. Oh, oh no, Go ahead, I, mean, I, I was gonna say, I mean, I think, I don't wanna you know, rehash, but I think what I'm saying is, People don't think they're really interested in the advanced analytics or they don't think they'll have the time, but oftentimes we find that, you know, at a certain point, like, wait, I've saved myself all these hours and all these weeks, so now I do have time um, to perform advanced analytics, and it's easy, and I don't need to know how to code. Or, you know, maybe there's, you're saying that because you already have someone in house who can code, and I think Albert showed, you know, someone can go in there and write their own code or adjust code, um, so I think, it does have meaning um, for anyone who's in analytics and, um, you know, just wants to help the organization and themselves take that analytics to another level. Sure, and 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 specifically just to reiterate um, uh, or re-clarify, Alteryx is an ETL tool and it's, or can be, and Tableau is a data display dashboard tool? Correct. Okay. Yeah, and then, well, I mean, Tableau can also, you know, grab records uh, from different data sources, and and it can do a lot. It can do joins uh, as well as there. Um, the where te where Alteryx fits in is that we can do. You know, it's it's an, again targeting that line of business analysts where we can access you know different data sources at a larger volume, and then putting it in a in a user interface where really, as you can see, it's it's not a high learning curve at all. It's a drag and drop process where you know you can see the progression of how your records are being transformed each step of the way. Yeah, I think that's a hard question to answer just because, I mean, I think we're all used to, so used to categorizing things and being like, okay, what bucket does something fit in, right? So your ETL tool or your visual analytics tool, and, you know, as Albert just said, we do have a tiny visual portion, but obviously Tableau is amazing, right? We know Tableau is amazing, and that's why a lot of customers use them together. Um, and Tableau does have those joins, but for large amounts of data and, you know, multiple data sources, it gets a little sticky, right? So that's why these two, two tools in conjunction are stronger um, together. And just going back to the imports, um, you've already addressed the, uh, the question regarding SAS, but what about specifically uh, MicroStrategy and uh, Nadeza? Natiza, yes, we, I think we, yeah, we have uh, um, access to that. MicroStrategy, I do not believe so. And um, I'm going to grab the ball again here and share the screen. Excellent. And if you guys go to our uh, website, altrix.com, under technical specifications right here, this is the list that we have in regards to um, uh, accessing all the different data sources. Um, and again, if there's something here, well, I don't think, I don't see Natiza here. If there's something here that we currently don't have, then, uh, you know, th there's usually some sort of wraparound uh, that we can we can access to. One of I the think, things that, uh, go ahead. Oh, I think Natiza is in here because it's under the parent company. I thought I saw it. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not. Yep. And another thing I wanted to point out, we also have a community group uh, called Altrix Community. Now, for those who are interested in, uh, in downloading the tool, it's, uh, you just go to altrix.com. There's a 14-day free trial there that you can, do you can download onto your, uh, onto your PC. Um, and uh, you can start um, you know, do, you know, creating a workflow 
Um, you know, we also have a, a huge community group where we, let's say, for example, Natiza, right? Yeah, Natiza, and it is under the IBM. You were right, Mimuna. There it is. Yeah. Right there. Yeah, so we do have an index base yeah, under IBM. Where we can yeah. uh, where we can access that again, uh, you know, th this is a great uh, great commu uh, great site that we have this uh, Altrix community. Um, you know, back then, you know, before this site was created, you know, we we usually have to rely on Stack Overflow. Now we have a a budding community group where we actually help out each other, answer a lot of our questions here, and then even share workflows uh, among each other and share uh, and share macros. So going back to your uh, demonstration, Eller, uh, instead of mm -hmm. excluding the null values, could they have been switched to show a zero? Absolutely, yeah. Um, again, it's, uh, it's going to be dependent on the particular workflow. So if I go back to my original workflow here, so you see this as null values here. I can actually you know, replace that with a zero. Let's go ahead and replace it with a zero. Put a formula tool there, and let me zoom in a bit so you guys can see where I'm going to say that my loan now will be zero, and I want to do a union where I'm stacking it, and I'm bringing back all those records again right there, and there it is. That's uh, You can do that. Love it. Uh, Stop. I have all these specific questions coming in, too. Um, this, this is, uh, the questioner says this is all very cool, but I could get overwhelmed by the volume in some of these actions. Is there a way to apply uh, distinct? I'd still like to, be, like to see all possible combinations, but only one uh, instance of each. Yes. The answer to your question is yes. We do have a lot of different functionalities here. Go ahead and stop. cancel this workflow for now. So I can show you the different functionalities. Um, again, within the summarize tool, and I know that we're going to you know, more into the minutia, the questions here and more in the minutia. We do have a lot of function where you can you know, group by and by some sort of distinct, count distinct and all that stuff. Yes, you, you, we, we do have a lot of functionalities. Now, this will lead more into a question, again, for, uh, for all of those users that are new to Alteryx. Wow, is there is there training involved? Are, are there resources for me out there? You know where I can just you know after I download the tool, can it show me how to create a workflow? So again, within our uh, let me go back to altrix.com here, altrix.com, and under the resources, you can see training right here, and we have a lot of free training. Uh, within the overview, you know, you can, uh, there is a, a uh, we have videos out there that you can watch on how to create a workflow, um, and it's a self-paced training as well, where um, you, you can do something that is very simple as uh, accessing data, or you can do something advanced where you're grabbing uh, data from the web, and it's coming into as a JSON format and you need to parse that out, for example, right? So I think one of the questions was, uh, I was reviewing the questions, can you grab data, uh, you know, can you download data, you know, from the web? And the answer is yes, we have a download tool that uh, can grab, can do a web scrape, you know, depending on the URL and depending on the, uh, the API, right? Yeah, and then once you do a web scrape, usually sometimes it comes out as an XML format or a JSON format. From there, you can actually, uh, uh, you know, reconfigure that data set into more a structured tabular data set using our, our JSON data uh, parser. And again, just want to reiterate, we have a lot of training here, as you can see, on-demand training as well, where you, where you have little, little YouTube videos uh, that you can view. Um, you know, oh, uh, once it renders here, you can watch little YouTube videos on how to access data how to do a join, you know, or even something, uh, you know, how do I do increased, uh, you know, forecasting uh, algorithm. And I just wanted to give, you know, this is great training, and I just want to give a plug for the starter kit, too, in conjunction with some of these other resources Albert is mentioning. Um, you know, the starter kit has some of those pre-built workflows. Um, there's even a marketing-specific one that helps you assess um, 
customer ROI and segmentation. Um, so again, incredible resource that already has pre-built workflows and pre-built Tableau workbooks. Um, and then again, you know, if you need more help, you can go back to some of the training as well. So as Albert said, a ton of resources available here. Yeah. And then once you once you take that next step of uh, of uh, you know you download the data and you want to communicate with us, you know we we will work with you to create a, a specific use case. So um, you know we there will be an engineer like myself who will help you uh, create your create your workflow and then save you all that time and resources that you initially put and, and then into one simple workflow that you can uh, save and run on a schedule and and you know. And you can save tons of hours, sometimes days, <laughs> in your in your uh, work process. Uh, so, can the final prepared data be outputted through other BI tools like uh, Quick, et cetera? Maimona, you want to? Uh, hi. Uh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Um, yeah. So, actually, do I have ball? Let me just. Yeah, sure. Okay. Let's try. Um, so, yes. Yeah. It can. Um, so click Power BI. It can also output back to Excel, um, Terra data. So there's a full list um, of what we output back to at www.alterix.techspecs. And I'll show what we can output to. But yes, um, we love Tableau. Um, great visualization tool, but obviously we offer multiple other um, options for, for users. Yeah. Nice. And is, is there any data scrubbing that has to be done before this tool will be able to um, function display properly? For example, moving Oracle data to a text file? Um, you can actually do the data scrubbing within the, uh, the workflow that you created. You do all of the data cleansing, data prep, uh, data scrubbing that you need to do within the, uh, the Alteryx workflow. And then after you do all that data scrubbing process, I'll put it to the uh, uh, another data platform, whether that be an Excel or text file, yep. Yeah, and that's what we see a lot of customers um, using Alteryx for, is when you're trying to match all this disparate data and you have null values and inconsistent column names, um, a lot of cleansing, you know, we, the one where the user is cleansing, there's a lot of cleansing going on. And having that reusable workflow is really exciting because then every time you're adding new data, you're not starting from scratch. You already have that workflow built. You can add the new data in very easily. So, of course, we can't have a webinar without this hot topic coming up of metadata. So where are the definitions of metadata for the Alteryx objects? Okay. So within the workflow right here, let me go ahead and uh, share my screen again. All right. So, yeah, is, is the metadata uh, saved? The answer to that is, is yes, it, it is saved. Um, again, when I say metadata, it could be, um, you know, as simple as, you know, what type of uh, uh, value that is. Is that retained? Yes, it, it sometimes it is retained when, uh, you know, depending on the, the, the format that you're outputting to. If you're outputting it to a text file, then, yeah, that metadata can be, can be gone. Um, this whole entire workflow, as you're seeing right now, it's actually, uh, it's XML-based. And we can actually also read XML. And within that XML, you have all of that different metadata types that are stored in there. You can you can import this, and then you can see, and we can do some uh, another workflow parsing where we can extract all of the metadata information that's contained in here. Love it. And you, and I think you already asked answer the next question there. And your answer um, asks um, with the inquiry of exporting to XML. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, I saw I saw one uh, question here um, regarding uh, is oh, there yeah, a Mac Mac version of uh, for uh, of Altrix? The answer is no. There is no Mac version. However, you can you can run in parallel in the Mac. You know, if you have a a, a Windows version running parallel with your Mac, you can download that into that parallel and uh, you can use Alteryx. And the reason why I know that is because yesterday we just had a client, you know, he uses Mac a lot and he doesn't want to, uh, you know, use a, a PC. So he was uh, using Alteryx in his Mac by running a parallel. Yeah, I just want to echo, there's quite a few customers who, you know, for obvious reasons are 
Mac base, you know, in different industries, and we have quite a few customers running in that parallel instance. And we've got a lot of questions to get through here uh, well, coming in. Um, we've got a few minutes left, so we can get in, fit in a few more. Um, do you support full uh, T-SQL logic, case statement, uh, substring, recast, database, data type? Yeah, the short answer is yes. So for those SQL guys out there, again, this, you know, this tool is really directed towards the, the non-SQL, non-scripting line of business analysts. Don't feel left out. Uh, we do have a, a text box, a, a SQL editor text box, uh, where you know I know that some of you guys have created pages and pages of your scripting here, and you don't want to lose it. Sometimes you know because I, I used to be a SQL coder myself, where I have pages and pages and stored procedures, and I was able to translate it into uh, an Alteryx workflow one. Um, Two, sometimes when I get, you know, you know, if I already created something in SQL and I, you know, I'm, I want to do some sort of in-database processing where I grab my records in the database first using my SQL logic, the answer is yes, I can drop in my SQL script in one of those input data tools and it will do, you know, uh, processing. So instead of grabbing millions and millions of rows, you're just grabbing a subset of that data. And, and an interesting question. I, you know, compared to other data prep tools, um, what, where does Alteric stand out? My money, you want to add? Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I was like, where do we start? No, I mean, I, I think it's a hard question to answer. You know, Albert showed the, um, the Gartner um, sections earlier, and we really do stand alone in the middle there, right? So as far as having an ETL functionality and an ability to connect and blend all sources, the ability to have this cleansing and then the repeatable workflow, um, I think Alteryx just really stands out there and, you know, Gartner agrees and other people agree um, that it's really, we're in a unique space for, you, you might have heard the term self-service analytics thrown around a lot lately, um, and it it's a little vague term, but it is true. This is self-service analytics, and it's front-to-end um, and reusable, which is amazing. Love it. Um, do you have any chemical functionality, for example, the ability to carry out structure searches or calculation of chemical properties within the tool set? Chemical properties. Okay. Um, I'm not familiar with, with that. Um, I think... Um, I'm assuming you're, you're at probably asking some sort of MATLAB function. Um, you know, because of our integration with R, um, you can actually put in as many type of formulas that you want to put in there, whether that be some sort of uh, differential equation, integral uh, derivatives, um, any type of uh, type of functionality. Because of our um, you know integration with the with the R, uh, open R, open source R. You can pretty much do any type of formula that you want. And is there a free version for academic use or academic partnership? Um, hi, I can, yeah, I can answer that. Um, we do work in conjunction with universities. Um, there is, you know, some parameters around it. So um, I am more than happy to send that information privately and connect you with the department that works on that. Hello, and uh, um, trying to work through just a couple more questions here um, before we run out of time. Uh, is there connectors to social networks available? The answer is yes. We have, uh, we have native connectors to some, uh, to some social networks. And within our community, uh, some people within our community actually created macros to connect to some social networks, whether that be Yelp or some, or Facebook or, or uh, I believe, and Twitter actually is, we have, that's a native connector. So the answer, short answer is yes. 
All right. Well, I'm afraid we are just coming up to the top of the hour here, and that's all we have time for. Thanks to all of our attendees for um, such great interaction and such great Q&A, and thanks to Albert and Maimuna for a great presentation. We really appreciate your time today. And, of course, thanks to Altrix for sponsoring today's webinar. Just a reminder, I will be sending a follow-up email uh, with links to the slides, links to the recording. I'll also include the link for the 14-day free trial. Uh, and I'll give you access to um, make sure you have have somebody's uh, point of contact so you can ask your additional questions and get those answered. And I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you, everyone, again. Thank you.